and you are always faithful, God. So we approach with boldness before your throne, God, and we want to say, here we are. And we just want to lift off every burden that we had from this weekend, every heaviness. We just want to, would you just lift it off, Father, because we want to meet you tonight. We want to have an encounter with you tonight, and we will never want to be the same tonight. So just, Holy Spirit, would you dwell around our hearts? Would you open up our hearts to prepare for what, what God is going to do tonight, Father? So we just want to honor you, Holy Spirit, for being here. We just want to worship you. Amen. Why don't we all stand? How's everybody doing? Good. Woo! You ready to worship? Okay, let's worship. Let the holy roar of God resound. The waters part before us now. Come and see what he has done for us.
God reigns down here forever. He reigns down here for the God of
just want to leave you room, Holy Spirit. And we say, do what you need to do tonight, God.
greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than man, our God is healer. Sing it again, our God is greater. Our God is greater.
if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against us? Oh, nothing, nothing. What could stand against us? you have come over the hill of home mountain to be you around Lord you have come over
Yeah, Father, oh, we want to make you king, Lord, over all our circumstances in life. Oh, Father, we want you to go beyond, to go into our own circumstances, Lord. We want to make you king of our circumstances tonight. Oh, increase your presence, Papa. Increase your presence, Papa. Mm. Hey, yeah. Oh, Father, take all the heavy burdens from us. And give us your peace. We want to make you king, Lord, king over all our, over whole, our whole life. Yeah. Well, good evening, everybody. Great to have you all here. My name is Kees van Velzen. I'm also a pastoral intern with Steve and Sandra. It's my wife, Alika. Woo! Hey, you can clap. You can clap. Isn't God amazing? Yes. Oh, thank you, Papa. Well, I want to invite Kevin up. We have someone with an amazing story. Nick. Sorry, Nick. Yeah, I want to invite you up. <laughs> we have someone with an amazing story. And uh, you know, in your life, God can change you in one second. He can change you. He can put your world upside down in one second. And this is one of the stories. Nick. Um, yeah, so basically, I used to have scoliosis. When I was 19 years old, I got diagnosed with scoliosis. And uh, that was the time when I left the church. And um, yeah, I think God really used that to bring me back to him. And basically, um, I prayed God. I was like, I can't do this anymore. It's just, I, I had it for two years about. And so it was 19, 20, 21, 22, so four years. And I had it for four years, and I was like, well, I had it before that, but I didn't know I had it before that. And then as soon as I got diagnosed with it, all of a sudden, it just became really uncomfortable for some reason. And then I couldn't sleep, and my, my entire body, because it was a 30-degree scoli scoliosis, my entire body was shifting to the left side. And my left leg was like about an inch and a half higher than my right leg. And um, yeah, so eventually I was like, God, you got to help me. You got to heal me. And um, I, I went back to my church, and I was like, I started having faith in God again. And then eventually this guy came, um, he's, his name was Eugene May, and he just started talking about God's love. And he just, every time he would, he would come up front, he would just worship for like half an hour before speaking. And be my friend for laughing, which is like, what, what is he doing? Like, why is he worshiping? But it, and then it, it, then it, it, sorry, it ended up being pretty good because... Eventually, like, you could feel that, like, the spirit and God, like, him and God were, like, tight like this. And, um, yeah, so he started talking about how he got a healing. Um, he had no stomach, and his stomach was, like, it was a plastic stomach instead of his stomach, his regular stomach. And he just raises, he raised his hands up, and he was worshiping God, and it's just kind of, like, to make a long story short, his stomach grew back, and it was pretty insane. Yeah. So he talked about that, and then he talked about his wife um, that had the same problem as me, and she had scoliosis, and he just prayed for her in, in their living room, and her leg grew back, just, her leg just kind of grew, and um, I, I, I'm just kind of, no, 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 I just can't, it's because it was straight, like, yeah, okay, yeah, thanks, <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, so, yeah, so... He's like, if you need healing, he said, like, just come to the front, and I feel like God wants to heal people here. So I was like, I was the first one to run to the front because I felt like God really wanted to heal, like, do something in my life. So I just ran to the front, and then he asked me what I wanted because he said, like, I feel like God really wants you to say out loud what you want. And I said, um, yeah, well, I have the same problem your wife had, and I have a shorter leg by an inch and a half. So he sat me down. He's like, grab a chair. I sit down, measures my legs, and they're about like this. And... Um, so he starts praying, and scoliosis is unhealable, pretty much. It's like, when you have it, you have it. You can go to the chiropractor, it'll fix you up by like maybe five inches, but that's it. Like five degrees, but that's it. And um, uh, he just prayed for me, and in the space of like five seconds, just God just came over me, and I just, I couldn't handle it. He was just telling me like, all your, like I forgive you, I love you so much, and I just, I felt it so much, and I just felt him just come back like in, inside of me. I don't, it was weird. It was like, it's just like, whew, like it was a huge feeling, and I started crying like crazy. And simultaneously, I felt all the muscles in my back just release because they were all contracted because my spine was all crooked. 
and I felt my spine just go like, like back straight, and somebody pull him on, on my leg, and then I look up, and he just looks at me, and he's like, yeah, you felt that, right? And I look around me, and everyone was around me in a circle, and they were like, what the heck? And, and just, I stood up, and for the first time in my life, I felt straight, and I just, it was insane. And then from that day on, I just, I was like, God, I'm for you 100%. And my friend just told me that, like, after that, she told me that my leg, my left leg just went, like, further back, and then it came back like this. So it grew, like, further than my right leg, which is pretty crazy. I guess, like, God was just readjusting my pelvis. And that's it. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you. Wow. What an amazing story. You know, for God, there's nothing impossible. I don't know how you, how you came here tonight, sick or whatever, but this could be your night. For God, there's nothing impossible. Yeah, we're going to the offering in one second, but I first want to take a look at the part of God, at his character part. We all know God has a lot of names, like for healing, Jehovah Rapha, and one of them is Jehovah Jireh, which means God the provider, or the Lord will provide, the Lord will see. This is not only a name, but this is a part of who God is, a part of his character. You can find this everywhere in scripture. For example, in Genesis 22, 12, where Abram called God that he will provide. What else does it mean that God is looking after you? That he knows what you need, that he cares for you. This is a piece of God's heart that says, I am your provider. I don't let you down, never. Jesus says in Matthew 6, 25, don't worry about your life. And if you read more further, Jesus is, is explaining in this part that the Father knows what you need. Jehovah Jireh, I know what you need. I will provide. There, there is a reason why Jesus said, don't worry in Matthew 6, 25. Because worries makes your heart sick. It takes all your hope away and it blocks your growing in faith. In those times, it's hard to believe God for beyond. It makes you depressed. And sometimes we have to do the same with giving money away. You know, we have so much worries that sometimes an unexpected bill came in the, mail came in the mailbox. And just like, oh man, God, I can't give. I don't, I don't know what to do. And they're all serious problems, of course. Sometimes in these situations, your worries are bigger than your faith level. But the name of God is, I am your provider, Jehovah Jireh. And like I said, it's not only a name. It's not only just a name, but it's his character to look after you. He knows what you need. He takes care of you. He's a good father. So tonight, I want to encourage you to take a risk, to step into this place where you say, God, I want to do I want you to make me, I want you to be my provider. I'm scared, but I choose to trust you because you are the truth. Sorry. That doesn't mean give everything away or give an extremely amount of money tonight. Let the Holy Spirit lead you in this and ask him how much you can give tonight. Let him help you with that. Giving money is not only the fact that you gave money but the fact that you choose to let God to be your provider, to say, God, I trust you in this. I'm gonna be your, I'm gonna let you be my provider. Choose him to let him go beyond every expectation in your life. And from that you will see your faith level will grow and God shall go beyond. So if the, yeah, people do the offering, come forward. And worship band, you wanna play a song? Great. So, you know, go in that place and say, God, I'm scared, but please go beyond. I will take the step in faith. Yeah. So, Father, thank you very much for what we can give tonight. And, Father, we choose to trust in you tonight. We say, God, you are our provider. We choose to trust in you. It's a choice. And we're going to believe that you are going beyond even when unexpected meals, bills come in the, in the mailbox. Thank you, Father. Bless us. In Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. And if you have a check, 
Uh, it's at the seat of your bag, and please write it to TACF. No catch the fire, TACF. Yep. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come and let your glory come. some quick announcements for you before we move to our message. Uh, the building is closed tomorrow. We have no meetings. Um, on Sunday, Tara Jay is speaking at the church again. And um, we are also having our hallelujah party. So there's two options for you. You could go to our New Market campus at 1030 in the morning, or you could come here at 530 um, in the evening. And the tickets are $5 at the door. Their door is open at 530. And the show will start at 6, and we're having a guest entertainer called Tom Toombs. Um, and before we move to our message, we just have a prayer request. Um, would you mind stepping up here? This is... Shipra. And what did you need prayer for? My sister's in a, having an operation since 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, she's in Washington. She's cancer. They are removing it. She's still on the operating table. So, I just want everyone to say a prayer so that God intervenes and helps her and she comes out all clear. Can I have the ministering team up here? So, would you just lift your hands up to her? And Lord, we just, well, we just lift up D2 up to you, God, and we just thank you, Lord. We thank you that you're faithful and that you're always good. Lord, we just pray for wisdom for those doctors who are just doing that operation. And Lord, we just pray for miraculous results. Lord, we just pray for your Holy Spirit just to come fill that operating room, Lord. And we just ask for your complete healing in Jesus' name. Lord, we just thank you that cancer has no power in your glory, God. That it has no right to be in her sister's body. And Lord, we just ask for your complete healing, God. And Lord, we just ask for peace, Lord and just comfort for her family, God, and give them strength and grace just to walk through and support her. And thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, amen. 
Okay, so I'd like to introduce our speaker tonight. His name is Terje Liverwood, and um, for the last few years, he's been the director of our School of Ministry in Norway, and he's also one of our partners in Harvest Ministers, and he's been planting churches there. And he's also been a missionary to Africa, and he started an organization called World Outreach Mission in 1991, and God's been using him greatly just to um, reach North Africa in countries like Niger and Nigeria and all the countries around it. And he's been so instrumental in just bringing God's love to unreached people groups. And, and he's been also just working on building an orphanage and he feeds the poor and he also just is building two Bible training centers. Um, He's an amazing man. He's so close with the Holy Spirit. He's so excited for God's kingdom. And he just has radical adventures with Jesus. And he just moves so much in just signs and wonders and healing. So could you just stand with me and welcome Terje? Okay, thank you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord! Hallelujah! Oh, Father, you know, God was just speaking to me right here and saying that this meeting will be a new start for many people here today. People that have been like going in the same, in the same routines over and over and over again. They have maybe felt, yeah, the Lord is here, the Dad is here, the Holy Spirit is touching me, but, but they're waiting for that breakthrough. But, you know, God is giving you a new chance. Hallelujah. God is raising up people, men and women that have been like going in routines for a long time, but he's given them a new chance. Hallelujah. And God wants to say to you, you have a new chance. You will stand up. You will start walking as the son of the living God, as the daughter of the living God, and bring his kingdom out where you live in your daily life, wherever you go. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, it's, it's so good to know. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm just this little quiet, you know, Scandinavians, they are very quiet. It's just as me. <laughs> Not bad. You know, I want to start with telling you a story that, about a friend of mine in, uh, in Mali. We have some churches in Mali and some other places in West Africa. Uh, normally I'm telling stories from Niger, but this one is from Mali. Well, it's a little bit Niger also, actually. Um, a young man, his name was, or is, I mean, Ataher. Ataher uh, come from the Songhai tribe, where there are about, uh, about one million people. That's quite a big tribe, but it's, I mean, not of the biggest. Uh, strict Muslim background until we, until we started our church in, in Gao in Mali. There was no church, uh, Songhai-speaking church existing. Uh, but today there is. Hallelujah! <laughs> That's a privilege, you know, to be able to start the first church in a people group. Wow, oh, that's a real pri privilege. Okay, um, Atahir, he had a friend that came to the, to the church and he was healed and his life was totally transformed. And Atahir had a lot of trouble and he said, well, let me come to this church also and see, you know. And, and he, ca he came, he gave his life to Jesus and, he and his wife and his children, he had, how many? Five, four or five children. And, um, and uh, you know, he, he was a humble man. He was really, he really wanted to do everything the leaders of the church said. And um, slowly, slowly we saw him growing, but it was very slow. But one day, uh, Atari said, I would like to go to your school of ministry. 
We have a school of ministry in, in Niger. Um, and um, and in, in Mali they speak French and we don't, we are not, we, we have like one year with Hausa, one or a half year school with Hausa, one with English, one with Fulani, one with French, or sometimes English and Hausa, or English and or French and Hausa together. So he had to wait till the school had his language. <laughs> and he came to the school and, you know, he came to a different culture. It's not very different to me, they are very similar, but <laughs> there are two neighbor tribes, uh, neighbor countries. <clears throat> And um, he felt the food was not like the food he was used to, you know. And uh, and uh, I don't know if there is any school of ministry people that recognize this problem. <laughs> and um, you know, he started to complain a bit, and slowly, slowly, he started to be a, become a big problem in the school. And both him and his wife, that used to be so nice and, and humble, and they, they, they were negative and critical and troublesome all the time. <laughs> and we said, is this what our school is doing to people? But we decided it was just the food. <laughs> Actually, we had to send Atahar back. And that was a big decision also because actually he he gave up a lot of stuff he quit his job and and a lot of things but we warned him several times but we just had to send him back and when he came back he had he felt it was so unfair that he out of all the students he and his family were the only ones that were sent back and he gave up so much. And he became actually, for a while, he was really a problem in the church there also. And slowly, slowly, uh, alongside with his bitterness and his, well, the trouble he had in his inside, he started to become sick. And he became sicker and sicker. I don't know exactly what it was. It was some stomach trouble. Over several months, he be, the sickness became worse and worse. And he ended up in the hospital. And we, in Norway and several places, we, we knew him, of course. We loved him, uh, even if he was troublesome. <laughs> uh, and we prayed for him. And he just gets, got sicker and sicker. And one day, I think Grace was visiting me in Norway the day before, or us in the school in Norway with a team from the school here. And they phoned me from, from uh, the le our leader in Mali phoned me and said, hey, well, the phone line was really bad, so, um, so I didn't hear the whole story. But I understood that Attire was so sick, they brought him back from the hospital and, uh, and uh, they, they gave him up, kind of. So I said, okay, let me pray for him, put, put the phone to his ear and, and I, will, uh, I will pray for him. What I didn't hear was that he died. He was dead. <laughs> So I said, put the phone to his ear and I will pray for him. So our pastor there, he put the phone to his ear and I heard the Holy Spirit said, speak life into a tire. Well, that, that was a good idea. <laughs> Normally God's ideas are good ideas, you know. <laughs> well, I mean always, sorry. <laughs> and so I said, in the name of Jesus, I just command life. In, into an attire. In the name of Jesus, I command life into attire. I said it three, four, I don't know how many times. And after some couple of minutes, attire said, Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> and I, I heard from the back, 
I heard a lot of people shouting hallelujah, screaming, you know. I, I didn't understand because I thought he was just sick. And it was not so strange to me that he said amen to my prayer. <laughs> and the next day I got an email from, from a leader there about some practical stuff. And then at the end of the mail said, well, by the way, thank you for racing, bringing a tire back, from, uh, from, back to life. I said, what? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, that was, that was, that was cool. That was nice. But, uh, amen. That's worth an applause. Woo! <laughs> I had no idea what, what, what had happened. But, you know, what is, is well, maybe it's also not so strange. But after this, Atahir kind of changed his behavior a little. <laughs> I don't know, there's somehow a new kind of gratefulness. And he's so thankful to the leaders in the church, you know. And, and uh, here his behavior and the behavior of his wife also is totally changed. And he's walking around just witnessing and bringing people to Jesus. And God really gave him a new chance. Hallelujah! And you know, God is a God of new beginnings, a new starts. And He wants to, to make sure that we all the time have new starts. You know what? God is God the Creator. Hallelujah! He's, he's the creator. He's new, making, creating new things. He's creating new things that never existed before. And some people say, well, yes, we, we believe in creation. Yeah, but I said, he is the creator. It's not that he was the creator, but he is the creator. He is the one that creates new things all the time. That's his nature. His nature he, is that he is the creator. And when you connect with him, you, that, that creative flow, that it starts flowing into you. And it starts doing new things in your life. And when I'm talking about creative flow is not I'm not talking only about arts or music that also but new ways new ways of thinking God is calling I, I, I sense that there are people here that God has spoken to you about some business project that you were supposed to go into at, and you didn't. And you feel that, oh, I lost it. And there are some people that have been called out to the mission field. And somehow, I don't know, fear, worries, fear of the economy or something stopped you. But God is giving you a new chance. It might not look exactly like the plan that you had. It might not look exactly like what he was about to lead you into. But he will give you a new chance. And you need to say, Lord, create new thoughts in my head. Amen. Speak to my heart. Speak to my head. Let me know what you have planned for me around the next corner. Hallelujah. Because he is planning something for you that is new. That is different. Amen. He's the creator. He wants you to renew your mind. 
the mind and the plans and the way of understanding you had 10 years ago should not be the way you are thinking today. And actually, the way you are thinking today should be different from the way you were thinking yesterday. Hallelujah! Because he's all the time creating. Amen. So, and we are, you know, God is a spirit. Those that worship him will worship in spirit and in truth. That means we need the truth. Amen. We need solid teaching. We need doctrines. We need knowledge of the word of God. But we need to have a spirit that is open, that is receptive, that is open for new ideas, new strategies, new businesses, new challenges, new places to go, new people to touch. Hallelujah! Amen! Amen! God is giving you a new chance. But you know, if you continue in the tracks that you have been going, for so long time, you will miss the new chance. And God is saying to many of you today, is like, well, how do we say that in English? <laughs> the ball is on your, your part of the field, in your, in your court. Amen. Hallelujah. Because there are many people that are sitting waiting and saying, well, yeah, daddy, I love, I, I know you love me and I'm here and, and you know, I'm open for anything. And you have sit, been sitting there for 10 years and be open for anything. Whoops. <laughs> or you have been sitting there for two days waiting for, <laughs> well, well, there are times to sit for a couple of days. I have a t-shirt that says, there is no off-season. Amen. <laughs> well, I bought it in Minnesota last week. Because what are they called, it, the team there? The Vikings, you see? The Scandinavians, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is no off-season. But let, let's pray for a moment. I, I'll continue here, but... Well, if you, if you know right now, you, I, I, will, I will say this and I will give you some minutes to talk and I will tell you a story. <laughs> uh, if you really want to say to the Lord, give me a new direction. Show me exactly what is that new chance for me. And I'm willing to do what you tell me, whatever it is. And I'm willing to go on to find out until I know. You know, for some of you, God, I believe God will, go, God will come to you today with with a, a vision or a picture or an, an idea, maybe directly, maybe through the ministry team. So the ministry team, you be, be ready also. Amen. Because there are, there are many people here today that will take a new step, a, new, a decision to say, I'm not sitting on this same chair anymore. <laughs> Some of you, and the first thing you need to do is just to find a new chair for the next meeting. <laughs> and not, don't be insulted if someone takes your chair. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a small start. <laughs> you know, Abraham and his father, they left Ur. How do you say that in English? Ur. Ur? Or he left somewhere in Chaldea, <laughs> his home place with his father. And the Bible said they were left to go to Canaan, the promised land. And 
on the way, they stopped in Haram. They stopped. I don't know what stopped them. The Bible doesn't really say. They stopped there obviously for some years. They stayed there for some years. They have left, ever, have left everything to go to the promised land and they stop halfway. I, I don't know if it was his father that, I don't know what it was, circumstances. Sometimes we don't need to really find out who to blame. You understand? We just say, Lord, I don't want to be here anymore. I want to go there where you have promised, where you have called me, what you have planned for me. I want to go there. I want to be there. Amen. And Abraham was there for years. He followed his father. They knew they were going to the promised land. And his father died. Hey, his father died. He was following his father to the promised land. Who should he now follow? You know, right now, the Holy Spirit is, start, Spirit is started, starting speaking to your spirit. You see, God has not forgotten you. He do not regret his gifts. Amen? Hallelujah. And it's not, there's a lie that many older people or grown-up people are believing. That is, well, God will use the youth. Well, of course, now that's not a lie, sorry. <laughs> but he will only use the youth. That's a lie. Yeah. No. God wants to use everyone, and he will use you. If you say, hey, I'm here. I will have the spirit of the living God flow through me. I will be a, a light in darkness. I will carry the glory. I will go in those works that he planned for me to walk in. Hallelujah. There is something called holy rest, what do you say, restlessness. Yeah. You know, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that a, a sense of holy restlessness will come over this congregation. And even when they rest in your presence, uh, Father, I ask for a flow Oh, inspiration, a flow of inspiration. I speak to the spirit of the people that are gathered here today. Rise up, rise up. Hallelujah. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, there is something in, the, in you that will not allow you to die. There is no something in you that will not allow you to just sit there and be a spectator. Amen. You should not be coming just to see what the Lord is doing. No. But bring his, his presence and his kingdom with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. Just like God rose a tire from the dead, he will raise you from the dead. <laughs> he will raise you from, from this spirit of, this passive spirit, this, this, uh, yeah, apathy, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Who wants the ministry team here to come and, and lay hands on them? And, do you have a word? No. <laughs> do, please raise up your hand. If, uh, if, you, if you want the ministry team uh, to lay hands on you and pray for you and release 
and release that new that new urgency in your spirit that new new ideas new visions new new flow of creativity from heaven just raise up your hand and the ministry team will go around and father in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we release destiny we release works prepared from you in the name of jesus come father come you can stand up also if you know where if you want where you are your ministry team, just go our, around. <sighs> Come, Holy Spirit. Shaya Brondo Sitandaya. Oh, come, Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release, we release direction over Ken's life. Reveal right now, Father. Just stand here. Oh. Thank you, Father. Shame, Borolo Bosende Gideri, Alendro, Zevisi, Sende, Ekiasin. Come, Holy Spirit, come over, Ken. Come, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, we just release a flow of revelation, a flow of revelation. In the name of Jesus Christ, combo recesendo morolosia. In the name of Jesus, we release spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts. Oh, laborosin de Mayeria. Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak revelation over each and every one of them to these people. Come in the name of Jesus. Come in the name of Jesus. Come Holy Spirit. Come Father, fill them with your love. Lift them, Father. I release spirit of revelation to flow in their spirits, Father. Let a new move start in their spirit right now. Just continue, continue to flow, Father. I speak revelation over them right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
right now and to flow, to continue to flow tonight when they sleep, the days to come, Father. I wake up a slumbering generation. I call, call it. Wake up in the name of Jesus. Wake up in the name of Jesus. Come into the destiny of God. Come into the plan of God. I wake you up in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, Rosembarete Kindi Moya. Oh. Come, Father. Shekaya Brondosia. Come, Father. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh, revelation. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh, come over this couple right now. Shene Makreta Landa. I release your plans over their life. Provision in the name of Jesus. A flow of the love of the Father. Flow of the love of the Father. Come, Holy Spirit. Just let your love and your plans just, just soak to marinate their lives, Father. Holy mm. Merendo Sekiria. Is there anyone else here that has, anyone that has not been prayed for? It, hold your hands up so the ministry team can see you. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. The two of you, do you belong together? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Father. Immediately I pray for you, I saw like it. Uh, yeah. 
Hallelujah. I think I'll continue to preach a little here. <laughs> you can continue to pray when, or minister and, and let the Holy Spirit do His work. And hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Oh, we just, we are so grateful, Father. We are so grateful for being in your presence, for being before you, for being... Oh, we are so grateful, Father. That, uh, thank you that you are really an almighty God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You are really an almighty God. Narindia. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Oh, Eyes have not seen, that's chapter 2, verse 9, nor ear heard, where neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Hallelujah! Amen! Ears have not heard and eyes have not seen the things that God prepared for those that loved him, loves him. Amen. So God has things in store for you that love him that your ears has not heard of and your eyes have not seen and that your thoughts has not been able to comprehend. Hallelujah. Amen. And God wants to continually take us new steps, take us into new things, and enable us to conquer new land. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I will, um, you know, you know, you need, and I need, I need my head. To be in tune with my heart, my spirit. Because there are things that you might sense in your spirit. You might sense, Lord, there is something here. There is something new here. But I'm not really sure what it is. Maybe you just need to take some time alone with the Lord. Just to be in his presence. Just to cry out. To maybe in Maybe take some time off and fast and pray and say, Lord, I want your will. I want to hear from you. You can never force God to do anything by fasting and praying enough. He loves you perfectly as you are, you know. But you can make sure you tune into his frequency. Hallelujah. And enable your, your mind and your head to understand the frequency of the Spirit. Hallelujah. And that's when we start to see some of those things that we have not seen before. And maybe there are things you have seen in other people's life, but God is raise, raising up a new kind of people, a people where there are men and women, sons and daughters that really walk as sons and daughters. Hallelujah. Amen. And it doesn't matter what you did before. Hallelujah. God will heal you. God will restore you. God will bring you up. I was reminded of another story also that I, I told a part of this story this week in the school also, but not just a part of it. It was a, 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 another man in, in Niger. His name was Usman. He, he um, when he was one year old, both his mother and his father died. And he was given over to, to some relatives. And he stayed with his relatives for about, well, I think two years. 
I, I don't remember the, whole, the, the exact details, but he said a couple of years with, with uh, I think it was like his uncle and aunt. And after two years, they said, well, we cannot afford to care for you anymore. You'll go to another, some other relatives. And so he was sent to some other relatives. And instead, he, from he was one year old, he stayed for a period like from one year, two years, or half a year with different people year after year. He was just sent here and there. And from the time he was about eight years old, people that he stayed with started to abuse him sexually. Young boy. And at the time he was 11 or 12, he said, I will never trust anyone again. And he moved out in the bush. And he decided he made himself a little house of straw and some sticks, you know, and he stayed there alone. And it, he was stealing a bit, and he was trying to work a little here and there, and he barely was able to su survive. He survived alone. And, um, and when he was about, about 20, he came to a Christian meeting. He gave his life to Jesus, had a powerful meeting with Jesus. And um, he was... For a couple of years, he was really enjoying his new life in the church. But you know, with all, with that background, wherever he came, also in the church, there was new conflicts, conflicts and quarrels, and one thing after each other. And after five years or something in, in the church, he just gave up them also. He was even more filled with bitterness than ever before. Well, he, there was two churches in that town. He, was, he gave his life to Christ in the evangelical church. And there was a Catholic church there also. So he went over to the Catholic church. But there even quicker, he, he did, found out he couldn't stay there. And about 15 years later, I was eating on... A, on one of these street cafes in Niger, in West Africa. And um, I got in contact with him, started preaching to him. I, he, he had his clothes, he looked like a Muslim, like 99% of everyone is there. And I expected him to be a Muslim, but he, little by little, he said that, well, I was a Christian for a while. I, I, I believe in God, but I don't believe in his people. But he came to our church, and about three years ago, um, Duncan Smith, some of you know him? <laughs> he, came, he came to our church, and he was speaking about the Father's love. And, and Usman, you know, he had never told us his story. And Usman, Usman, um, um, Usman was just totally changed by the love of the Father. Should we be praying here? He's deaf and blind. Let, let us stretch our hands toward him. Okay. You're his wife. <laughs> no, there is the wife. <laughs> okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, we are asked now, right now, Father, for a creative miracle. We command his eyes to open and the ears to open in the name of Jesus. 
Come right now, Holy Spirit. Come right now, Holy Spirit. We command his eyes and his ears to open in the name of Jesus. Oh, come. Kingdom of God, come right now. Kingdom of God, come right now. Shenga brolo vosi kri belenori asindi ni mokoye terendaya. Oh, thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we just command his ears and his eyes to open. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is here. Amen. Thank you, Father, for a miracle here tonight, Father. Oh, thank you that you are here. Thank you that your kingdom are, is here to be manifested tonight, Father. Thank you for the manifestation of your kingdom here tonight, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, we'll continue to pray here. You know, I, I was to talking to you about Usman. Hallelujah. You know, while, while I continue to, to preach, the Holy Spirit is, is working on our brother here. Hallelujah. And Usman, he, he, was, he came to our church. And actually, in, when he came to our church, I forgot that part, after a short time, he created trouble everywhere there also. Everywhere. And, uh, and uh, after a while, I mean, he stopped going to church. But this day, when Duncan was there, the love of the Father touched him. Usman, he was so wounded from his upbringing, from his background. Can anyone see what he's saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Wonder where okay, wonder where his wife was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. We'll continue to pray more for you afterwards. <laughs> yes. Just continue to stay there. You know, well, let me just say that... Uh, Okay. The Lord was speaking to me when you, we were talking here, when we were, we were ministering to people here, that there are some of you that God is reminding you that you, he's calling you into a, a, a ministry of healing. Who is that? There are several of you. Amen. Oh, that's good. Hallelujah. You know, Usman... He was so full of rejection, and he was really the, like the, 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 the role model of an orphan spirit. <laughs> he, was, he was really so full of rejection. But then the Lord starting, but Daddy started to fill him with his love. And you know, slowly, slowly, Usman started to change. And I told the students yesterday how one day I told him, we'll go to your village. 
And he didn't dare to tell people in his village that he was a Christian. He had been like up and down. I mean, he was Christian a couple of years, then he was not, and then he was, and then was not, and then he, you know. And he did not dare to, uh, to tell them. But um, one day, the Lord told me to go to his village, and I, there in front of, of this Muslim, all, everyone in his village were Muslims. His chief was there, the chief and the people that he, he had been hiding from. And, um, and I, when I was there, I was preaching, telling them about the kingdom of God. And you know, when we come to new Muslim, Muslim villages and towns, uh, we need to demonstrate the power of God. Amen. God is doing great things over here now. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. F restoration. We command the sight and hearing to be normalized. Amen. And you know, Usman, when, when I, I was in his village, there was one boy there who has been he broke his, his, his back when he was one year old. He was about 16 years old when we met him. And the people in the village said, if anyone needs healing in this village, it is this man. I just prayed for the, the, the chief. He had some small tr problem somewhere. He was instantly healed. And now they brought up the big problem. And I, I told everyone, now... Usman will pray. You know, Usman had been hiding. Usman didn't even tell them that he, he was a believer. He, he knew that they knew about him, but he didn't dare to tell them. And this guy came up, this young man with his broken leg. Well, he, he was not totally broken because he was actually able to walk, but he was in constant pain, and he could not do anything. He could not carry anything, could not work. This man came up, and I said, Usman, you can heal him. And Usman, you know, <laughs> no, no, no. Usman knew how many times he had a new chance. He was so happy that he was even one of our people but that he would be used by God in his own village like that. You know, he had never believed it. But I brought Usman up. And when this guy came up, the young man came up, and Usman put, put his hand on his, his back, he was immediately healed. And his, he, there was full movement in his back, and, and uh, he immediately started to run around. He started to pick up things. He started to lift things. And the whole, whole village was just in awe. And, the, and the, the, the chief said, wow, we know now why Usman has been kept away from us. He has become a prophet. <laughs> and a prophet in the in the ears of a Muslim is more than a prophet. Uh, I mean, that was Muhammad and, and Jesus and a couple of others, <laughs> you know. Hallelujah. But God is a God of new beginnings. Amen. And right now, I want those people that's, that know that God is calling them into a healing ministry, come up here. Come up here. Oh, that's a couple of people. That's more than a couple of people. <laughs> hey, man. And afterwards, we will release you on the sick people here. <laughs> Oh,
Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, let's just stay in the presence of the Lord for a moment. Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, we release a wave of healing anointing. Gifts of healing. Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Oh, thank you, Father. Come right now. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh, come, Holy Spirit. You know, Romans 8, 28 says that Jesus was the, f that we will be transformed into his image. That he may become the firstborn among many brethren, among many brothers and sisters. <sighs> oh, come, Holy Spirit. <sighs> oh. Oh, Father, we release people into the ministry of the healing ministry of Jesus. The same kind of healing ministry, Father. Oh, come, Father. Mm. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh, healing anointing, Father. Shikaya rendaya. Come, Holy Spirit. Shikai. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Hey, oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Shinga broto se te 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 denda maya ye re. Oh, oh, your your ministry is not only here; it's in your neighborhood and with your colleagues. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh, resenda bare. Come, Father. Shikini me. Be. Kim Alabovros in this in this area. Come. Come, Father. Shakayenara. Amen. Is in Brolo Bosikiria. Come, Father. Amen. Shade. Come, Father. Shake in there. Oh. Miracles in these hands in the name of Jesus. Oh, 
Thank you, Father. Come, Father. Oh, come, Holy Spirit. Shenga Brolobo says, Sit in the mar. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, some of you felt the anointing of God flowing through you. Some felt it very powerfully. Some felt a little. Some felt nothing. But this, you know, what I was talking about today is God is giving you a new chance. He's and the ball in, is in your court. Amen. Because when you serve, when you serve God, when you walk with Him, there, it's, a, it's a walk of faith. Amen. And whether you, what, whatever you felt today, you will walk out, you will walk in faith, and you will, you will be bold and heal the people you met. Amen. Oh, is there someone that came up for this first altar, altar call that we have not been praying for? The four here. Okay. Amen. Just receive. Just be there and receive. Come, Holy Spirit. Shaka, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Ramasasasa, yeah, Rindi, Nimakiria, La Brondo, Sese, Tanda, Tanda, Brondo, Loya. I will take you from your present place and I will lift you, says the Lord, and you will be dependent upon me. You are not your own boss anymore.
Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Yeah, just check it out. If I'm still Lord, get yourself in that position. Make yourself dependent upon me. Amen. Amen. You know, some of you, there are some people here, you came here today because you are sick. Those that have been prayed for already, if, if some of you have sicknesses in your body, that's not what we prayed for now, huh? Please, uh, you don't need to partake in ministering to the rest. But the rest of you here, if you are able, you stand up, and everyone that want to receive healing today, be ready. Amen. Those that we pray for here right now, can you stand on this, on the line here, facing the audience? Except if you want to be prayed, ministered to and prayed for because you are sick and, or you have pain in your body or you have any kind of symptoms in your body. Every one of you that are able to stand here that I, I was praying for you and also including the ministry team, please come here. Yes. We're just, those that need prayer, just wait a moment. And those that are ready to minister and pray for the sick, you stand on the line here. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we ask your healing power to flow through everyone here today. We command your healing power to flow through everyone here today. Amen. You can go up to two and two together. Two and two together, the, the people in front there. And then if you need to be, to, you need healing, come up here. The presence of God is here. Healing flows in this room right now. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we release healing virtue. Healing power to flow here today. Who else need healing here today? Okay. Okay, so we all pray for him. What is your... It's like my nerves and my tooth are very painful. You feel it right now? Yeah. Okay, constantly? Yeah, especially when I eat. Okay. We, yeah, we take this one first. If there is... Okay. No, not scoliosis. Okay. It's curved back. My back is curved. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just command the nerves in his jaw to be healed right now. <sighs> Come right now, Holy Spirit. Command all pain to leave his jaw right now. Amen. How do you feel? A little bit painful. Is there any difference? There is a difference. Yeah. There is a difference. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we command this pain to leave. We command the, the nerves to be restored and healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Come right now. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Right now, in the name of Jesus, to be straight, in the name of Jesus. I also command the chest and everything that has been twisted there because of the, of the back. I command it to break out in the name of Jesus.
So people, we want to thank you so much for watching. We want to wish you a very good week. Be blessed. Let the Holy Spirit fill you. We're going to have some more ministry time. So we would like to see you next time. Have a nice week. Amen. <laughs>